Welcome everybody here to our next webinar at uh, JFT Brokers. My name is Stefan Friedrichowski, as always, for those kind of webinars. A warm welcome in the name of JFT as well today for the topic Vola Breakout Strategy with Martin Gale Elements. Well, you see, um, the title is extremely long because I have to bring in several topics here. And yeah, the title is really a little bit like the program because we have a lot of elements mentioned here in the title. And all of those have to do yeah, with the strategy we want to develop, we want to introduce here today. Today, um, yeah, we have the 21st of November, 2018, um, 7 p.m. So, yeah, standard time, so to say. And um, maybe one additional remark, because I know we have the English one here today, but, uh, you know, uh, there is a world of trading in Germany starting on uh, two days on Friday um, in Frankfurt. And, uh, yeah, if you have a chance to come there, then you might have a chance to come in touch with me personally because I will be there for a complete two days. Uh, it would be really a pleasure for me to uh, see you personally. So anyhow, uh, it's an opportunity, but I know normally we have here the international ones. So Frankfurt will be not that close as uh, for, for many other people within Germany. Back to that complicated title. Voller breakout strategy with martingale elements. You see, um, there are things mentioned. Voller. Voller means normally volatility. So in this case, it will be once again, as maybe always when I talk about volatility, I go for an ATR, an average true range indicator. So that is one element. Breakout strategies, that is really something we know for sure we know very well, but normally those strategies work with um, yeah, time periods. Like, let's look between eight and 10. Let's see what price range do we have within that time range or time period. And then we organize our breakout trades. So it will be a combination of both volatility and breakout. And finally, I mentioned martingale elements. So you might be um, familiar with uh, martingale elements or martingale trading strategies. Standard wise, or in most cases, that has to do with doubling your amount of money invested or doubling uh, position size of your trades or anything doubled. But let's see how we can use it. There's a reason why I mentioned martingale elements and not purely or um, martingale. Anyhow, you see already my contact here. You might already download the slides for today um, directly via the go to webinar control panel. You have my uh, email address if you um, have interest in any Excel sheets or anything else which is shown here during the webinar. Uh, no problem, just send me an email and uh, I'll make sure that you will get it soon. Before we start, really, I have, as always, to show that one here, that slide, our risk disclaimer, mentioning that finally, whatever you do, you, you do it by your own, by your own responsibility. But I think that's self-explaining, although we give recommendations here about what I would like to do, what I do uh, indeed but anyhow it's always your decision and your own responsibility okay but let's look a little bit more in detail so we have definitely to have a short recap about martin gale we have had already one um a webinar about martingale trading strategies therefore just a short recap what kind of elements we use there and uh, what is the origin and how we use it then we go in depth into the strategy of Vola breakout and what in, uh, indicators we use, what kind of elements, what kind of calculations we do, and so on and so forth. So um, all the details about that strategy. 
we have to talk about position size in detail because we will do something special if we have a losing trade. How to do and what to do, um, we, we have to calculate and we have to discuss. I will show a couple of examples of strategies for different underlyings, but overall I will show what kind of underlyings really work well with that kind of strategy. And finally, as always, I create, I build up a portfolio of those, and uh, that is done including the walk forward methodology for trading uh, strategy development. Um, a few of you might know what I mean with walk forward, it has always to do with optimi optimization within the past, then apply those rules in the future of that past, and then iterate those steps until today um, so that we really do not a, um, a pure back test uh, like most people do so it's a little bit different it's um, yeah it involves a lot of uh, computation time but it works quite well and gives you more confident about the real future if you start that kind of trading strategy tomorrow onwards live so let's start with Martingale. So what is the origin of Martingale? Well, Martingale stems from the roulette table. And normally, what if, we, if I even simplify a roulette table to a red and black and forget all the numbers and forget the green zero, it makes life easier here for any calculation. So now, then we have only red and black. And normally what you do is you put a coin on one of those red or black fields uh, and then either you lose or you win in case you you win you get the same money additionally back so um, for example if you you put one euro on the table then you will get the one from your own and an additional uh, euro um, from the bank if you lose okay money gone so um, then you lose exactly that one euro. But what you can do is, you can do a simple rule. If you lose, you double what you put on the table. And that's all. You double your pool. And uh, that means after you put your money on red and black comes, then you have uh, lost uh, the one euro. Then you double your pool and you put then next step two euros for example once again on red and maybe you lose or you win but that's everything in case you finally win you go back to your original pool that's all and that's exactly martingale and uh, there's a nice anecdote about that that uh, casanova has been a gambler of exactly this approach let's have a look at what that kind of approach means for your equity because we are trader we like equities and therefore it's good to have that on view directly and we can calculate it quite simple in this case what i do here is really just pure statistics so in this case my pool is uh, five euros my initial pool and then i have random numbers and in case the number is above 0.5 i will lose and that's exactly what's shown here uh, if we go through that kind of sequence. Um, in the first run, then um, I lose my money. So five euros gone. So I have started with 200 euros and I'm back to 195. What I do is, as I explained earlier, I double my pool and mm, unfortunately, once again, I lose. So going back additional 10 uh, euros. Doubling the pool means now 20 euros, but good thing, uh, no, bad thing is once again I lose. So I lost already in total 35 euros. Doubling the pool means now 40 euros already, but now I win. And that means I'm back in the, win, uh, in the race here and back at 205 euros. And you, you see what kind of equity we get. Looks nice. Looks like more or less a straight line going up, which is, of course, nice, but there's a but. Let me reassemble the numbers. Let me just 
uh, get new random numbers. That equity even looks better. Uh, what I'm really doing is I press at nine in Excel, and now I have a, an equity. Oh, it's already getting dangerous because what you see what happens if you do those kind of martingale steps. You are doubling, doubling, doubling. Um, yeah, and that results in maybe already close to 400 euros um, a pool. So it's a it's a big number. And let me press F9 once again and see. Oh yeah, there happens one thing which is typical here. You see, <clears throat> I'm going back below minus 1000. Okay, in Excel I can show you uh, exactly that, but in the real life that would mean I'm bankrupt. That's all. So I have no money at all. So um, after about eight um, rounds here, hmm, I'm gone because no money left. That's exactly what happens if you go purely martingale. In principle, you always win on a long run, but there are two restrictions. You need unlimited resources in terms of money. Hmm. Not quite easy. Second, there, um, if there's a limitation at the roulette table, which is normally in place, then it doesn't work. And Normally, there's a maximum number you uh, your pool can be, and <laughs> but you need that doubling process here. So, therefore, strategy in this case doesn't work for a long run. Short term, maybe yes, <laughs> um, but even on short term, in this case, looking for exactly that equity here, uh, already after eight rounds, we are bankrupt. But of course, there might be other ones doing better. Look for this one here. And after 100 rounds, we are at 450 euros, so we gained 250. Anyhow, that's the concept of Martingale. We have to tame that concept. And we, we need exactly to do and know what we do. We need limitations in terms of how far we go. And uh, maybe just that doubling is not the best thing to do. But we will see. There are better things we can go for. And let's really start with our strategy. I know that slide is terrible. It has minimum 10 lines, uh, written lines. So it, let's go through line by line, but then I will show you the same um, visually in a graph. So in a standard chart uh, of MT4, because that are the rules for the Vola breakout strategy, at least for the starting. It looks terrible, I know, but it's really easy. We start with what I call a reference time. That might be, for example, 10 o'clock. And that point in time is our starting um, point. So what we do there are two things. First is we will measure an ATR value. So we need an ATR. We special period. What I go for is uh, I go for one week and I use an M5 chart. So to have then a one week history within my ATR indicator means I need a period of 1440 because that's exactly one week uh, of M4 candles. So we measure our ATR value. And the reason is we want to know what is the volatility more or less short term and even one week i call now short term but at least i want to know whether we are in a market environment like let's say today or in those heavy conditions like financial crisis at that point in time the dax for example made 100 points in five minutes um, today it might need one day so Volatility can be totally different, and I want to take that into account for that strategy. Therefore, we measure the volatility in terms of an ATR value, and then we place our first orders exactly at our reference time. How to place those orders? Therefore, we need 
first parameter, reference time. Second parameter, we need a multiplier for that ATR value. And that is a distance where to place those orders. And we will place two orders. Since you know the strategy has a breakout within its name, therefore we place a buy stop order at close price at the reference time plus multiplier times ATR value. And the sell stop order exactly on the other side. So that's quite simple. It's a standard breakout procedure. Stop loss for those orders is always the opposite side, so um, quite easy. Position size we need for any trade, therefore we have um, to, to decide on our initial trade risk. In my case, it will be 50 euros. So the position size is then more or less automatically calculated because we know the entry and the stop loss and those two numbers and a risk trade calculates the position size. Since we need to take profit, let's go for a risk reward ratio. For example, if that would be one, it would be exactly double, the double twice of a multi ATR times ATR value, because we normally we go one step to the north and one step to the south. And so that will be our total distance for setting the stop loss. And let's go for a risk reward ratio and that measures our um, take profit level. So that kind of distance. In terms of degrees of freedom, we have three degrees of freedom. Reference times, multiplier on the ATR period, and our risk reward ratio. In principle, I could say the ATR period is the fourth degree of freedom, but mm, I use a fixed one for one week in M5 chart, as mentioned, um, that would be a period of 1,440. So the, finally, I have three parameters, which is fair enough. It's not a huge number, um, um, but that's okay. I know. So that has been a long explanation of how to use or how to set up the strategy. Let's do it visually within a chart because that makes it a little bit easier. Let's start with the DAX chart and that uh, I prepared already a DAX chart here. Um, just um, um, an easy chart, M5 um, period. And uh, so we, we start with the reference time. Let's set that reference time to, um, for example, eight o'clock. And uh, what does it mean within um, a JFT chart? At eight o'clock, it would be nine o'clock uh, German time. So, um, so why not go for that? So here we have that reference time. Then we need to close just before that reference time, that would be this level here. So let's have a horizontal line here as well. And let's mark that line uh, once again in blue and a little bit thicker. So here is our reference time, the vertical and the reference price, which is the horizontal line. Okay, now we need an ATR. ATR no problem that we have within our standard uh, indicator set here. And let's go for minimum uh, fixed. And uh, we need a period of 1,440 because that is just one week. And now we see that indicator here or the value is about 13. And let's calculate everything just with 13 that's fair enough so our reference price here is let's uh, go for an integer number so let's go for this one here um that is um, 11,144 and now okay we know the atr is 13 points we need a multiplier on that let's say two so two times ATR would mean uh, 26. So that finally means we we have 
um, buy a stop order. Let me first uh, change the color here so that we see that a little bit uh, better. Um, so let's go for red in this case. Or oh, that's okay. Um, and that should be at 26 points above uh, the reference price. So that means 50, 70. Okay, here we go. That would be our buy stop level. And of course, we need a sell stop as well. So we have two order, uh, two orders in place. Um, one here, and the other one would be here, 26 points below. And that's the starting situation. And those levels, we will keep those levels. Let's go through the chart and see what what happens. So I'm not 100% sure. Um, what it means, this one, whether it hits our um, uh, order level, yes or no. Uh, finally, here definitely our buy stop would have been triggered. Okay, if that is the case, then we would need um, definitely um, a take profit for that. Let's assume we go for risk reward ratio 1, then the overall distance between entry and stop loss is uh, 52 points and we would do exactly that kind of distance which is about here uh, so i do not do it here maybe correctly mathematically mathematically but uh, it's about that there we have uh, that point and let's put that in green well, so that would be our take profit level for our trade. And now let's go through the, uh, the chart. So our um, order would be triggered here. And then unfortunately price goes back. And definitely it would have hit our stop loss. So here at that point in time, we would be kicked out of the trade. And now let's go for the other rules of that game for that kind of strategy. Let's go for Excel first because I wrote those rules already down. So we have our first trade and if our first trade reaches trade profit, no new trade, done deal. In our case, in the graph, in the chart, not this, not this time. So if it would be done deal, day end, we have nothing to do until the end of the day. Unfortunately, we hit our stop loss. If we hit the stop loss level, we instantaneously open a new trade, but into the opposite direction. And now the critical part comes. What position size? And the position size of the second and maybe third and maybe fourth trade depend strongly on the risk reward ratio. The principal idea is that finally, if our last trade hits take profit, we want to totally gain, our total profit should be like for the original first one. So in this case, exactly our risk reward ratio but including all the losers in between. So if it would be the fourth trade, then we need to, to uh, get back all the lost money for the other trades. In order to do so, and if you do the math behind, then you will realize it's quite easy. It's the simple equation 1 plus 1 divided by risk-reward ratio. In my case, with a risk-reward ratio of exactly one, it's exactly the doubling. Because if I put it down into the equation here, then I have one plus one divided by one, which is two. And that is my multiplier for my risk. So if I start with, for example, risk 50 euros, and 
I go for my second trade, then I have to double my risk. So that would be exactly the original Martingale situation. And you see already the trick. If you go for risk reward ratios bigger than one, then we don't have that kind of doubling anymore. So it would be less than doubling. Before we go back to the chart, let's have a closer look to that within Excel. Because it's it's really nice that we can use that kind of, let's call it, no, it's not a trick, it's just uh, mathematics, it's nothing more, but uh, it helps us a lot. So I have created just a table here, how the position size would develop over number of trade. And let's go first for the pure martingale situation with the risk reward ratio of one. And then you see exactly what we do is the, the kind of doubling. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, and so on. If we do that 21 times, we are already at a million. So mm, I think nobody um, could afford uh, uh, that risk um, anymore, but at least uh, not for any private retail um, client here. So we get really huge numbers. But now let's apply that rule of one plus one divided by risk reward ratio. Let's go for risk reward ratio of two. Then you see it's not anymore a times one million. Now it's 3000. And if, for example, we have risk reward ratios of five, then we are in a level here, okay, it's still a factor of 38 after 21 uh, rounds, but it's more or less affordable. And at least we can do it. So that's not really a trick in terms of, um, yeah, uh, let's overcome any, any other things. No, it's pure mathematics, nothing else. Still, we have to keep in mind a risk reward ratio of five means we need five times the distance um, of our stop loss distance until we get there. In case of our chart, and we have a stop loss of 52 points, risk reward ratio of five means uh, 260 points. Okay, that's already a distance. So mm, the, the higher risk reward ratio will be, the harder it will be to go there. On the other hand, what we can do else is we can go for smaller multipliers for the ATR value that makes our range smaller and then hmm, maybe now we get a deal. You see how it works. But that is really important to keep in mind what we are really doing here. So risk reward ratios above one will help us to get a lower overall risk in terms of the doubling procedure. Let's go back to the chart because uh, now we, we we can go for our trades. Remember, we have first we started with a long trade. That long trade um, went into stop loss. So since we have a risk reward ratio of one, it means we have to double our lot size. So we go for a short trade here, and <laughs> you see what happens. Um, a couple of uh, candles later, we are in stop loss once again, and now we have to double once again. But you see what finally happens couple of candles later, we go for take profit. And doing the position size, as I mentioned, means now we have recovered all the loser trades before. And finally, we have exactly the profit of risk reward ratio of one for the initial um, risk. So doing the math would mean, would mean our risk has been 50 euro our profit is now exactly 50 euro, finally, including the money we lost for all the loser trades before. And that's the logic. And now you can see already what's good or bad about that kind of strategy. A day like today would be a wonderful day. Even if we would have two losers, the third one would have recovered everything. So we are fine. 
let's look for what is a real bad day. So a real bad day would be a day looking for those lines. If you have something like a synodal behavior, just always going a little bit above or below those red lines. That would be a real nightmare because all the time. So the day started like that nightmare day. So we, we went up a little bit above the one red line, a little bit below the other red line, and once again a little bit above the next red line. Fortunately, price went up further. So everything is settled. Everything is fine. But the nightmare day is a day when that kind of behavior would continue. Okay, let's keep that in mind. What's good for this strategy? Good is if you have finally one move. One move far enough hitting our, stop, uh, our tech profit. If you have some wiggling around before, it doesn't matter. We get finally our profit. So nightmare day is if that wiggling goes on, goes on, goes on. Then we have that kind of nightmare day because remember we are always increasing our position size. All the losses will be, the, the next loss will be bigger than the previous one and so on. So it might add up to some real amount of money. So hmm, uh, we have to take that into consideration and we finally draw our conclusions. But that is how it works. But let's see that kind of um, trading idea, trading strategy in practice. Unfortunately, I cannot show it you, to you in Excel because it's a little bit too complicated. We need small time frames for that kind of strategy in order to investigate, in order to calculate complete time periods. Because if I go for, for example, for age one data, I get in trouble because uh, I did, simply don't know what happens first um, with those kind of candidates. So we need small time frames. That means we need um, thousands and even millions of data points. So Excel is not well suited for that. But I can show you to you with my, my C programs. And um, let, let me give you an example. Let me start um, a calculation that will always take only a couple of uh, seconds here. Let me start a calculation for Euro, US dollar. And I go for a special set of parameters. And those are written in those numbers here in the uh, right lower end uh, corner and you see the 1440 that's the ATR period then the next number the three um, is a multiplier on the ATR then the one the 1 1.0 is um, the risk reward ratio we start with that and the 600 is 10 o'clock because I always go for minutes after midnight and uh, those 600 minutes after midnight translate exactly to 10 o'clock. So uh, 600 divided by 60 is 10, and therefore that is 10 o'clock. Okay, uh, let's do the calculation because now the strategy runs, uh, reading the data, the M5 data, which is 1 million data points um, for uh, 14 years' history, and calculation is done. Even the visualization, ooh, complicated wording, word visualization, I didn't get it anyhow here's a graph and um, that is the equity and what can we conclude <laughs> funny enough during the financial crisis strategy didn't work didn't lose that much money but after that we have a good hit here so um, that works well so that's how the strategy is in this case, let me at least once show you a little bit more how really the trades are created out of that strategy or how it uh, really looks like, because we can learn a little bit um, about the internal of the strategy at, um, here as well. So what you see here within the Excel sheet is a complete list of trades for um, that set of parameters and uh, starting in 2008. Um, four. And you see what happens. First trade, first line here, risk 50 euro, as mentioned, 
and um, it was a loser trade. And finally, we get a, a loss of uh, 46 euro. The reason that it's not exactly 50 is uh, I always do the, the integer um, rounding because I cannot only I cannot I can only place orders like 0.01 lot, 0.02 lot, and so on. And therefore, I do the, the calculation here correct. And therefore, my risk of 50 euro finally <laughs> means I lost. Um, 46 uh, euros. That was the first trade. And the same day, we, we, we uh, turn our trading direction. We have a second trade with double risk because risk reward ratio is one, which means doubling in case of losses. And mm, once again, it's a loser. And then the day is over. What I mentioned not that strict until now is I have a fixed time stop. And you saw that already on my uh, slide. Uh, let me quickly go there because I, I use a time stop. And that time stop is meant for several reasons. or um, I use it for several reasons. One is I don't want to have overnight trades. Okay, for Forex, it would be fair enough. Um, beside weekend, then latest I should close my trades because otherwise I have some gap risk of a weekend. But I want to avoid um, swap costs. And I know that a little bit later than um, a quarter past 10 p.m., we get that uh, a spread increase, a spread widening, and therefore I close the trades quarter past 10 all the time. And I even realize my losses, in case they are one, then better the, to, to stop it than to go further. Finally, I would have a real problem if I would go over the night until the next reference time and I would still have a trade open. What to do now? Anyhow, I don't get that kind of question. Um, so I stopped trading at quarter past 10 uh, with a time stop. And that's exactly what happened uh, within the Excel sheet uh, or within that set of parameters and that kind of sequence. Next day, more or less the same happened. We open a trade, but um, finally we, we go for the time stop. And um, yeah, anyhow, day is over. Then the next day, we have a winner day with um, 50 euro. Everything worked well and so on and so forth. You see, that's how it works. And um, that's running perfectly. Let's go for a day like this one here. That's a big losing day uh, because we go two times doubling um, with a loser. And in this case here, we have finally a winner. So that's how strategy works. I mentioned already, that going for a risk reward ratio at one is maybe not the best idea. So let's see directly what happens if we go for other risk reward ratios. Let's go, for example, a risk reward ratio of two instead of one and have a look to the equity, which will be there in a second because calculations with those kind of C um, programs are really fast. Um, and you see, equity is getting a little bit more straight which is fine and if i go for um, let's go for five uh risk reward ratio of five uh, we can um, flatten our equity even a little bit further um, and you see it's working better and better it's not really a big step of optimization, what I do here. It's just going for a risk-reward ratio of 1, 2, and 5. Okay, I set already uh, the values for reference time at 10 o'clock and um, the multiplier for um, the ATR period, uh, the ATR value to 3. That doesn't work with really bad. So, Strategy is doing a real good job with those kind of parameters. And let me exactly tell you how I do it finally with all 
my sub strategies for different underlines. So I have a couple of risk limitations for that kind of strategy. And those kind of risk limitations uh, are in total three. So one is that I have a maximum risk. Because what I do here is in case I have a loser trade and I have to increase my position size or my risk value, I will stop that procedure finally if I have 10 times my initial risk. In my case, it would be 500 euros. So I have an absolute limit for my risk. It's 10 times initial risk. I don't go for any further increase. That prevents me to have the big losers in case everything is, or a day would be more or less what we meant or what we described a little bit like a nightmare day. So we have a maximum risk. Then I have a preference here to go for risk reward ratios bigger than one. That doesn't change the overall risk behavior, but with risk reward ratios bigger than one, I can go for more loser sequences. So in case of I have to increase my, my risk, I can do more steps like that. That's a good thing as well. And finally, I have that time stop at the end of the day. So everything stops. Whatever happens, there's a stop. And that's always good. That we don't have any unlimited risk like when I introduced the Martingale concept. That you see a little bit what that means. Let me go for some other uh, uh, parameters here. Let me let me show you um, a set which shows directly that we have to do here with um, real devil stuff like martingale. Let me go for um, a risk reward ratio of 0.7, and let me decrease my multiplier to 0.7 as well. And let's have a uh, calculation of the equity and go for nine o'clock now as a entry uh, as a reference time and that's how the equity now looks like okay that's amazing on the one hand you may like that kind of equity because the increase is huge uh, so in total profit is 200,000 euros more or less straight line going north so perfect um, but you see the but what I show here is a real equity including the intermediate losing trades during a day and at least we have one two three four five days which have been a real nightmare okay I know within 14 years but we have those days. And if we would go for exactly that kind of strategy, I know for sure in the future we will have those days as well. And now the question is, can you survive a 100,000 um, um, drawdown? And maybe the answer is no. So the problem with that kind of parameters with that kind of set of parameters there might be floating or in intraday losses which are extremely huge and you see what I mean was huge that day here would have been a loss of 250,000 euros okay it recovered <laughs> nice but you see what happens finally so it's that is the drawback of real martingale without any limits, without limitations. If I go for those kind of limitations, as I mentioned, which are not applied 
in that single program here but in the walk forward we have all those other limitations um, then we have a little bit different situation and let's have a look to that as well since it really worked well but we know or we have to know what we are really doing so if you go for the good underlyings and those are LUN underlyings which have a real tendency for trends like Australian dollar, US dollar, Euro, Japanese yen, Euro, US dollar, US dollar, Canadian dollar, and gold. And even DAX, which I started to investigate uh, just yesterday. So my portfolio is without the DAX. Even the DAX is really good. So I will show you in a minute. Um, so that's how a final equity looks like. And then even applying that walk forward methodology meaning not a single back test as those violet equity curves shown a couple of minutes ago that is now really walk forward methodology and still it really works well we don't have those spikes to the south uh, because of heavy martingale uh, elements we use here risk reward ratios far above one uh, sometimes even up close to 10 and then it looks like this and since let's have a look to those parameters and how those parameters our three ones reference time multiplier and um, risk reward ratio how those may change over time during applying the walk forward methodology let's go directly for the best one here uh, that is the us dollar canadian dollar and uh, i can show you how those parameters develop versus time so let's uh, have a quick thought here and then we can go directly for the oh that's sorry there was a mistake i go once again now it works sorting and now we can have a look to the parameters let's for example start with the reference time and the reference time looks like this over the last 14 years and you see more or less all the time it has been between 700 and 800 um, that means 720 uh, is uh, 12 o'clock so it's about 12 o'clock here that's that line only a couple of weeks ago there have been um, uh, earlier entries or earlier reference times but it's quite stable instead of those three um, periods here um, so you see the parameters doesn't change that much so that's reference time so it's a quite handy time like 12 o'clock so why not that's good uh, let's go for or let's have a look to the risk reward ratio and uh, how that develops over time and then we have a little bit more um, changes within uh, the period of 14 years but you see there's a tendency to higher numbers only a few times we have values close to one most of the time we have um, risk reward ratios of about uh, six and finally let's have a look to the multiplier the risk as uh, a multiplier for the atr uh, value and um, let's see how that develops and there we have more or less two states one is a low multiplier of about 0.2 point three and another one which is about um, three so a small one means mm, we might have a couple of trades in, in, a, in a short sequence and then finally we have the the one which um, gets all the profits and sometimes we do exactly the opposite with um, higher values for the that um, atr multiplier so that's how the numbers develop over time and finally let's have a look to the ducks because that is maybe 
one um, underlying, um, which is not part of the portfolio, um, but maybe we can get a, a good strategy for that as well. So let's see how it is the equity over time uh, versus time. And that doesn't look that bad. So it's 80,000 profits. Okay, the downside is during the last a couple of uh, weeks or even months um, we have a flat behavior but flat does mean not losing money but also not gaining money but um, it looks really good so ducks should be included into the portfolio and uh, parameters we know um, so that's how it is let's go back to how to interpret all those um, trading ideas here. What we know for that kind of strategy is that we need at least once a day one move into one direction. Later the day, earlier the day, doesn't matter. We need that one move. But now let's ask a question. Maybe we can amend the strategy to some special situations which are ideal for that kind of strategy. So we need at least one move during a day. Does it ring a bell? What about if we go exactly for those days with, for example, central bank's decisions like uh, EZB or FED or well, we can go for other currencies as well. So whenever we have a central bank decision, normally we get moves. We don't know the direction. But at least at the end of the day, there should be one move in one direction. And since we don't know initially which direction, that kind of strategy would recover potential losses before. Downside might be we know that exactly on those days we have spread widening, we have slippage within those trades, so we have to really check that live. But it's worth an idea to go exactly for those days which are known for moves. Think about every second Friday with the non-farmers payroll data in the uh, United States. Normally, we have moves. We don't know the direction, but the strategy helps us to recover potential losses before. So those days are ideal. So I think it's worth to spend another webinar on that kind of strategy here and just focus on those days. So it's more than a strategy for exactly uh, the moving days. Nevertheless, already now, strategy really works good, really well. And you see the, the kind of equity we can achieve here. But I think we can even do better if we just focus on those special days which are known for moves. And we know those days in advance. It's a good thing. So finally, we have a quite simple approach here, um, and we see good and promising results for trend-following underlyings, like mentioned. The strategy itself is just based on one ATR um, and uh, a given reference time. And what we need are um, yes, the ATR value, the ATR multiplier, and finally, our risk-reward ratio. We have to tame that strategy because in case of losers, we increase our risk. So that has to be done well controlled. Therefore, I call it just taming martingale approaches. Risk reward ratio is bigger than one helps us. We have an overall risk limitation in terms of value. And finally, we stop all trading activities in a certain uh, point in time before midnight. All those risk limitations are, let's call it them, vital. <laughs> uh, otherwise, we might lose too much money. But with that kind of overall approach, we have a good 
next strategy for our strategy portfolio and we know already a little bit more how to maybe improve it or just play that strategy at certain days and those days uh, we will investigate will be those with central bank decisions that will be our next step and our next webinar okay that's for now i hope you enjoyed the webinar today and um, see you again next month and maybe see you already on the world of trading in frankfurt this weekend okay thanks bye bye